So a very important thing to consider when climbing is what we call the directionality of holds. And every climbing hold has a direction from which it is best loaded. If you imagine drawing a flat plane across the holding surface, and then a perpendicular line coming out of that plane, your best position is to get your center of balance along that perpendicular line. Um, this is going to give me the most comfortable stance, the most comfortable rest positions, and the most power when moving off of that hold. Everything just comes together nice and fluid. Now, moving my center of balance off of that line is going to create a lot of issues in my joints and, and just lose a lot of strength on that position. And you can see here, it is still possible to hold on, but my body's in a skewed position. And you can see how tightly my wrist is bent when I'm holding on there. Um, what's happening there is my arms are naturally trying to return to a position where I'm along that perpendicular line once again. And this is causing a very sharp angle within my wrist and just seriously increasing my risk of joints and tendon injuries. It's also losing a lot of strength and stability on that hold. In a smaller or more difficult hold, I would not be able to make that move. So I want to take a look at this proper positioning from just one more angle because I really want to illustrate uh, just how protected your arms are in this case. You can see just how straight my wrist and my arm is. This is allowing me to almost completely hang off my skeleton and just allow my bones and my frame to support me. It takes a lot of strain off my joints and my muscles. So if we take a look at this move uh, in a little more detail, again, I'm going to draw that, that flat plane and that perpendicular line. And you can see just how secure and how fluid it seems when I'm moving off of that with the proper directionality. It's a very comfortable move. It's very comfortable positioning. And it really allows me to conserve my energy. Taking myself off that perpendicular plane, you can see immediately just how much more strength it's taking to make that hold and how easily I cut off the wall there. So at this point in time, we've looked at the importance of getting your center of balance along that perpendicular line and properly positioned to the directionality of the hold. So let's look at a few ways to actually move your body into that position when you're on the wall. Now the most, the first and most simple of these is just, just literally to, to move your hips and your core into that position and let your body come to the position that feels most comfortable. And the other way to do this is to reposition your feet along the wall if it's possible, and that actually keeps your center of balance directly above your feet. Um, so each has its merits. In, in the first case, which is allowing your body to, to move into position along that perpendicular line, this is actually creating a swing into the wall, and it's forcing that barn door that we talked about in a previous video. And this is one of the rare occasions, which is called a layback, which is, this is advisable. And this is actually pushing my left hip into the wall, giving me a great sense of stability and balance for the next move. So the alternate to just moving my hips and moving my body into position like this is to reposition my feet along the wall. Now this will allow me to bring my entire body uh, to a more comfortable position. This is seems a little off balance, but what it's doing is actually keeping my weight directly above my feet. And in a position where my hand holds aren't secure and strong, this is allowing me to take a lot of weight off of my hands in, in preparation for the next move. So here's a lateral traverse while bringing my feet around with a little foot switch and keeping my center of balance as close to, if not directly above my feet. So here's what it looks like when you fail to move your body into the proper positioning before making the next move. Now, as you can see, my center of balance still stays above my feet leading into this move. But as soon as my hand starts to move that far over, I'm not able to hold myself into the wall. My body starts to come away from the wall, and then I lose my center of balance above my feet, causing me to take that wide swing out. And once more, as soon as I lose my center of balance, I swing off the wall. So here's that move one more time, and you can see when I move my body into position first, then move my hands. It's a much more fluid motion. I don't swing out from the wall because I'm forcing that swing. And I'm moving myself into the swing before moving my hands and losing my center of balance.